You know, this is probably going to be a tough conversation because people are wanting to blame you. And this is a tragedy. Let's let's not sugarcoat. This is a horrible thing. This must feel as though you've lost two children. We're starting from a place where I'm not looking for more victims here. But people do ask, how did they let this happen? Uh, of course they ask that. Um, but the thing is, one statement that was just made is that you know your child better than anyone. And that's true. Uh, what people are hearing is what the prosecution says my son had. A fascination with fire brings people to think that he loved to set things on fire and watch them burn. That is not at all true. He would never hurt his, his brother and with the disa disabilities. But Julie, he's not I, severely I, I, autistic. Let, let's say this, oh, well, he's not severely so, autistic. He's not? No, he's not severely autistic, no. He, under the umbrella term of autism in the DSM-5, yeah. the psychiatrist did not find him autistic, but with autistic tendencies. Oh. Under the old versions of the DSM, he would be on the autism spectrum. Okay, got it. May I ask you what his developmental age is? I know he's, I know he's 17, oh, but does he have... age. Yeah. He's his own developmental age? Uh, they have said that emotionally, he would be targeted somewhere around 14, about right. three years behind emotionally. But cognitively, he does understand and he can function as well as any other other person. Uh, uh, he has issues with schoolwork and has to be taught how to, he was taught how to take care of a baby. We did not just leave him with a baby without teaching him what it means Julie, to Julie, I, I gotta be honest, and I wanna hear from Mike too, if you don't mind, but, but I, I, he, here's my thing. If you, this is me, uh, you know, Dr. Drew, age 17, not me trained, me as a 17-year-old screwball, like all male screwballs are, also 17-year-old males are, if you had given me responsibility for an infant, I would have screwed it up. Uh, there's no way I could have done it. Did, did you have, Mike, any concern? You've been a 17-year-old male. You know how our brains work. And then you've got a child that has challenges. Did it bother you? Did you worry about leaving him alone with an infant? Not a bit. I mean, I'm the oldest in my family. I've had to babysit my brother and sisters growing up. This is an outrageous part of the story. In his own handwriting, your son, quote, says, I didn't cook, burn, or light anything at all. Haven't played with fire. There it is. In two weeks, the investigator's version of Matt's inter interrogation is, they say, quote, Morgan said he set both fires by accident. So, Mike, what was going on there? How come they didn't let you guys in the room or an attorney in the room? What was that all about? Honestly, they just wanted, they wanted him as their target. This was their plan from the get-go. Because if, if Josh had not passed in that fire, then this would have been swept under the rug as a big tragic accident and there would have been nothing else about it. But I think the problem here but, is that when they had the, the investigator come in, they found that people had they found that uh, the two fires had been set. And as a result, that's why they started looking into arson. It wasn't someone died, we're going we're, we're gonna to find someone. It, it was we had an investigation, someone set these fires. We need to figure out if there was foul play going on here. That is why there was the investigation. That's why the prosecutor was involved. That's why the police are involved. But, but it wasn't question, just to attack, go after your son the question, and though, find but someone. But the question is, was, still, was that proper procedure, though? You have, at the end of the day, a child with awesome. autism, and he was interrogated for five hours. It was not recorded. So how do we know that, in fact, he confessed? So we, I don't, I actually don't think that... I think the confession situation is, is it's not good for the it's prosecutor. Yeah. And I think that if it actually had gone to court, and because he pled guilty, we're not going to see it go to court, but if it had actually gone to court, the defense attorney might have been able to get it thrown out. All right, Should've so why, why didn't it go to court? It court. didn't go to court. Uh, Jill, I know Mike's having some trouble uh, technically, Julie, but is, is, it, is yes. it the fact that, that he didn't go to court? Why didn't he go to court? Because of this so-called confession? Excuse me. <clears throat> the reason he did not go to court or rather to trial, is because one, he did have those confessions that it was the prosecutor's word mostly against his, <clears throat> whether or not he'd actually said those things. And, and why weren't you there or the attorney there And whether there he with had him? been bullied. How, how, how right, how come there was no one there with him? Can you tell us that? You read his Miranda <coughs> right? The he cops was. aren't gonna allow that. They're gonna put him in his own room. Do, well, why? Um, wait, wait a second. The reason we weren't allowed in there, 
Go ahead. We re I requested it. We requested. We told them from the beginning. Uh, they actually took us out of the room before they took him, so we did not even know at first that he was being interrogated. We told them he had that he has learning disabilities and had trouble understanding some of the, um, excuse me, some of the more complex questions that I was sure they were asking him. Uh, Julia, they told me that since he was 17 years old, it was not required that we be there. I understand that. Jonathan, you're saying they would not allow that? Isn't that no. kind of outrageous? Why would they allow the parents in there when they know they're going to get a confession from this child? Officers, well, gonna, but they're going to muscle a confession from him. This, how this, is that okay? This is not new. Right, this is an adult for all intents and purposes. This happens all the time. He's still an adult in South Carolina. Officers are very good at playing good guy, bad guy. And I guarantee you when they were in that room, they kept telling this poor child I that saw he's going to go home. I saw the Brandon Dassey thing, and I also read what Which the, exactly. the pre-interview from these parents who said that this kid believed of police that they were going to shoot him right. if he didn't give them the right sort of get out of this interview. He'd tell them what they needed to hear.